Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced React WordPress Theme Development. In the previous video, we learned about how to add the load more functionality in which if you click on this load more button is going to load more posts and it's going to continue loading every time you click on it as for as long as the posts are available. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about what is an intersection observer API. So what we really want to do is rather than the user having to click on this load more button, uh, we would want that when the user scrolls the window and when the, when it reaches this particular button, then it should automatically make an Ajax request to get more posts, all right? So let's learn about what that is. So let's talk about the Intersection Observer API. So what is this API? Well, it's an API that provides a way to asynchronously observe changes in the intersection of a target element within an ancestor element or with a top level documents viewport. So basically its job is to observe changes whenever that particular target element comes into view or intersects with that ancestor element, okay? Now, why should we use Intersection Observer API? I mean, couldn't we just go with the standard JavaScript way of probably listening to a Windows event, which is window.addEventListener? Well, let's understand why. So historically, detecting visibility of an element or the relative visibility of two elements in relation to each other has been a difficult task. Earlier solutions have been unreliable and prone to causing the browser and the sites the user is accessing to become sluggish, right? So for instance, when you're using the window.add event listener and listening to every pixel change, it's not very performant. I mean, you could use debounce function, et cetera, but then, but then if we have something available in the web API, why not make, why not utilize that, right? Now I'm sure you would agree to me that as the web has matured, the need for this kind of information has grown. For example, we require lazy loading of images or other content as a page is scrolled. Um, in our case, we're going to implement the infinite scrolling for the website where more and more content is loaded. In our case, we load the five posts or six posts first and we load subsequent posts as for as long as they are not finished, right? So that user doesn't have to flip through pages. Reporting the visibility of advertisements in order to calculate ad revenues or deciding whether or not to perform tasks or animation processes based on whether or not the user will see the result. So now that we've established what is the requirement and why we should use the Intersection Observer API, let's also talk about how does it actually work? How do we implement that, right? Well, this API lets you register a callback function that is executed whenever an element you wish to monitor enters or exits another element or the viewport. This way, the site no longer needs to do anything on the main thread to watch this kind of element intersection and the browser is free to optimize the management of the intersections as it sees fit. So how do we create an intersection observer? Well, in a nutshell, all you have to do is just create a variable called observer and instantiate the intersection observer it takes two parameters, one is the callback and second is the option. So basically, we can create the intersection observer by calling its constructor and passing it a callback function to be run whenever threshold is crossed in one direction or the other, all right? So each time the threshold is crossed, then that callback function will be called, okay? And then you can execute any sort of operation at that point. In our case, we want to call the load more function so that it makes an Ajax call to WordPress and gets the data for us and appends more posts, more articles, right? It also takes some of the options, as you can see in the second parameter of this, there are some options that you can pass, right? So we can configure it according to our needs and requirement. So now that you understand the basics of it, let me give you more details of what this callback will be like and what will be the options that we can provide. So let's start with the options first. Well, you can say this dot options or just create a variable in our case since we are in the class. 
since we are going to be using it for class, I'm just using this dot options. The first parameter you can pass is the root, second will be root margin, and the third will be threshold. Now this root is actually the element that is used as the viewport for checking visibility of the target, and it must be the ancestor of the target, okay? So whichever target element in, the, so in our case is going to be the load more button. So whichever is the ancestor of that particular load more button, that is what we're going to define. So this must be the ancestor of the target. Now in our case, we don't really need that because we want to use the browser viewport. So we can just pass null, which is by default. And this means that it defaults to the browser viewport. Now the root margin is actually the margin around the root element, okay? And the last but not the least is the threshold. So threshold 1.0 means set the is intersecting to true when elements comes in 100% view, which means inside of that callback function, we'll have something available called is intersecting. Okay, and this will become true as soon as the element comes 100% in the view. So you, ha you have an option whether or not you want to execute that callback if the element is in 100% view or maybe 90% or depending on what your requirements are. In our case, we'll go with 100%. So as soon as that load more button comes into 100% view when the user scrolls the screen, that is the time the in is intersecting is going to automatically become true inside of the callback function. So since now we have all the options that we have defined, we can pass this option to our function. So we can just say, so you've already seen this one. So you can just say observer equals new intersection observer. Remember the first parameter as we discussed earlier is the callback function and the second parameter is the option. So inside of this, we can say entries this dot intersection observer callback, okay? So this will have the access to entries and then we just pass the callback function and then inside of the callback function we'll have access to is intersecting and then and then we can perform what is needed for example calling the load more function okay so we will deal with this intersection observer callback which is our custom function that we will create in a moment then you pass the options as we've already discussed the root and then root margin and threshold etc so all of that configuration will be passed as the second parameter Okay, and then finally, we just say observer.observe, and then we pass the element we want to observe. In our case, it'll be the no load more button element. Of course, that's not the name of the element. I'm just putting that information just for understanding that this is going to be the load more button element because that's what we want to observe. So we've already discussed this. We basically create the intersection observer by calling its constructor and passing it a callback function. So basically we create the intersection observer and then we call its constructor, which is observe. So observe is the constructor of the intersection observer and then passing it a callback function to be done whenever a threshold is crossed in one direction or the other. Now, inside of that custom function that, that we'll create, which is intersection observer callback, it's gonna have the access to the entries, uh, which will be the array of observing elements. The logic is applied for each entry. So we can observe multiple elements in our case, we're going to observe just one of them, just the load mode button. So we're just gonna loop through those entries of the observing elements. We'll say entries dot for each, and we'll get access to each element. In our case, it will be load more button. And if the load more button in view, then we will have entry dot in is intersecting set to true. So remember we spoke about this, spoke about this is that is intersecting becomes true as soon as the element comes in 100% of the view whenever the user scrolls the window, yep. And then once this is set to true, which means our load more button is come into the view, we're going to call the handle load more post function, which we've already created. And that basically is going to make an Ajax call to WordPress and get the post for us. And then eventually it's going to append more posts to the existing ones, okay? So that's how the intersection observer API works. And now we're just going to implement that into our code and show that to you in action in the next video. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayed. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.